Hello friends, this is the last session in the IoT interview readiness package. Um, this session will talk a little bit about cloud computing, a little bit about uh, data analytics and then we will uh, finally seal the session. First question uh, right away, um, after deciding that you need to go for a cloud computing service, uh, choosing the same uh, will be a little tricky. What are all the parameters that you will think or on what basis will you select the cloud service provider? First one, whenever we buy any component, we will see if it has undergone some certification process. For example, even to buy a helmet, we see if it is ISI certified in India. Likewise, the standards and certification compliance is the first thing that you need to look into. Second, if you are uh, going for a cloud service provider, you need to look at their financial health. All of a sudden, they should not close the company and say that, no, I am at loss. It won't work. Business and technology strength. How much technical is the company? How much business values are this, uh, is that company having? All these will be looked into. SLA. What is the service level agreement? What can they give you? What is promised? All these things. Billing and reporting. How straightforward and how honest is the billing? Security. How much secured is the data? How much secured is whatever you are going to store with them and then support that they are going to provide. How much technical support will they give you whenever you are in need? All these factors will together let you select the cloud service providers because there are so many cloud service providers who are available in the market right now. So all these are the simple parameters that will let you select the appropriate cloud service provider. Why would someone opt for fog computing when there is cloud computing? Clarify. Fog is much closer to us than cloud. I am talking about the natural scenario. Cloud is little farther away, but fog is little closer. Now, the same scenario is what we are going to talk about now. We are generating data or we are sensing data. It, if it is processed at a place which is much closer to the data generation place, if the data generated is processed at the place which is closer to the place where it is generated, it will be much easier to process and it will be faster to process. And the action can also be taken much more faster. According to a simple example that I can uh, explain you right now, I am having an IoT project where I will monitor the oil spillage in the oil pipeline. I am generating data uh, from the oil pipeline with the sensors. If I process it right there very close to the oil pipeline and if I find out a leakage, I can alert it much faster than I sending the data to the cloud and then processing it and after that I taking a control action. So probably we are doing it at a better uh, closer vicinity to the data generation point than the cloud computing and hence it will be faster. So this is what is the reality and the data will be processed much more faster and it will probably help us to take the corrective actions much more faster is the advantage. What is the role of data analytics in IoT application? Well, IoT is all about sensors and the sensors is all about collection of data. This data when the sensor gives, we need to understand the data, we need to process the data and only then we can take a corrective action. This all will become impossible if there is no data analytics in place. So data analytics is going to be the heart, kidney, liver, anything of IoT without which we cannot really do much. IoT is all about uh, data, data is all about its value and its content in it. We need to understand the data. If the data is not understood properly, it's going to be a problem. What do you mean by data cleansing? The data cleansing is also referred as data cleaning. It is the process through which one can detect the inconsistencies in the data. The data can be corrupted, the data can be inaccurate, the data may have redundant entries. So all those will be uh, detected clearly in the data cleansing process and we can repair the data or we can delete the entry if it is not repairable or if it is found redundant. This is basically a process where you are making the data to be looking more stable. What is a regression with respect to data analysis? Regression analysis is a set of statistical process for estimating the relationship among the variables. A very straightforward definition. It will help you understanding the relationship among the variables. That's it. How is supervised learning different from unsupervised learning? Can you elaborate? This question would probably trigger more questions and only when you are giving a confident answer, this question will be kind of accepted correctly with your answer. Else this, this could as well be proving negative. If it is supervised learning, the data set, whatever is given to you, um, it will be very clearly uh, known to the user 
uh, known to the system that how the output will look like for the input that you are giving. So having an idea about what should be the output gives you a better edge because you understand you already know what is it. So we are having a clear idea between the relationship of the input and the output and that is what supervised learning is all about. But unsupervised learning we will not have any idea or very little idea about the relationship between the input and output which means that you will not know much about how the result should look like. This is called unsupervised learning. So the knowledge about the data whatever you are having is very minimal is what I try to convey. Compare and cl contrast classification and clustering. One can quickly answer this question easily uh, but it is important to connect it with a real time practical example. I will tell you a simple example. Um, if I ask you to uh, I have, I have got a bunch of flowers and uh, vegetables or let us take flowers. Uh, if I ask you to pick all the yellow color flowers alone, you are picking it and clustering it together. But if I ask you to classify the rose separately, uh, the hibiscus separately, the December flower separately, all those, it, it needs classification knowledge. Classification will look in into the features much more better than clustering. Clustering is just grouping. So let us go into the definition clearly. If it is classification, we will have a set of well-defined classes and you would like to know to which class a particular object belong to. That is like choosing the yellow flower. I will just choose the yellow flower because it belongs to the class yellow flower. Now in clustering will be little difficult where we will try to group the set of objects and we will try to find if there is some relationship between them. I will group only the hibiscus together, I will group only the rose flower together, I will group only the december flower together. All these things have got something interior to it which is connected to the attributes of the flowers. So clustering is connected to unsupervised learning where classification is connected to supervised learning. This is just a point that you can carry forward for explanation and I have given an example here also clustering I have grouped it but classification is represented this way. Um, you can simply remember the flower example that I told you. What is prediction model? Statistics is the fundamental feature or fundamental area that we will handle in the prediction modeling. Statistics will be used to, to predict the outcome fully and we are going to predict the future in most of the predictive analytics. But in predictive, predictive modeling it can be used to predict an event which has happened in the past or which can happen in the future. So without having an idea about when the event has happened, if we are going to predict, we use the predict predictive modeling there which is called as prediction modeling. Crime detection applications, suspect identification etc. will fall in the example criteria. What is EDA? EDA is exploratory data analysis and it is an approach for analyzing the data and to summarize their attributes through the visual methods. That's it. If you expand this that is more than sufficient actually. Exploratory data analysis which is used for exploration of the data through visual methods. That's it. What are all the data analytics tool that you are aware of? Tabla, RapidMiner, OpenRefine, Nime, so many are available. You can highlight at least two or three. With this question, we come to a conclusion of this IoT interview series. Please be uh, sure that you might be asked to draw the architecture diagram of any smart application like smart toll gate system, smart water, smart healthcare system, smart retail. Please be ready with it. I have covered all this in the detailed session of IoT uh, sessions that I have uh, conducted earlier in my channel. You may go through it if you uh, would like to do so. If you have any questions, you can uh, throw it at my uh, comment section. I will be responding you shortly. Thank you very much for following my channel. If you have any questions, you can type. If you have suggestions, inputs, please go ahead. Thank you very much.